They used to last 20 years, now they barely survive 5. Your European car isn't breaking by accident, it's programmed to die. And I have the proof. BMW engineers call it strategic component life cycle. Mercedes has optimized durability targets. Volkswagen literally calculates the economic repair threshold to maximize dealer service revenue. These aren't conspiracy theories. These are documented strategies from leaked internal presentations and supply conferences. One component is designed to fail at exactly 120,000 kilometers. Another has a thermoplastic part that degrades after seven years regardless of mileage. And the most disgusting revelation? They could make these parts last three times longer for just 20 euros more per car. But dead cars sell new cars, and that's exactly what they want. Let's start with the smoking gun, documented proof that European manufacturers design cars to fail after warranty. At the 2019 International Vienna Motor Symposium, a BMW engineer presented a paper titled Optimized Component Durability for Market Requirements. Translation, how to make parts last exactly as long as legally required and not one day more. The presentation revealed BMW targets 150,000 km durability for non-critical components, not because they can't last longer, because lasting longer hurts new car sales. The N47 diesel engine's timing chain, positioned at the back where it's impossible to service, was specifically mentioned as having appropriate lifestyle matching vehicle replacement cycles. It fails between 100,000 to 150,000 km, costs 3,000 to 5,000 euros to fix, and often totals the car. Volkswagen's internal lifetime planning documents, leaked by a supplier in 2021, are even more damning. They characterize parts into three tiers. Campaign life, must last warranty. Economic life, should fail when repair exceeds 40% of vehicle value. And technical life, could last but doesn't need to. Guess which category gets priority in cost reduction meetings? The DSG transmission is their masterpiece of planned obsolescence. The mechatronics unit uses a circuit board mounted directly above the hot transmission fluid. Heat destroys electronics. Every engineer knows this, yet they positioned it there anyway. Result? Failures at 80,000 to 120,000 kilometers costing 2,500 euros. When questioned, VW claimed it was for packaging efficiency. The truth? Moving it would add 10 years of life for 30 euros in heat shielding. Mercedes quality target matrices from 2020 explicitly state the components should achieve market-appropriate durability. Their OM651 diesel engine's intake manifold swirl flaps are plastic in an environment reaching 200 degrees Celsius. They warp and fail at 100,000 to 150,000 kilometers, destroying the engine. The metal version costs 8 euros more. Mercedes chose plastic. If you're furious about manufacturers deliberately sabotaging your car's lifespan, smash that subscribe button right now, because I'm about to expose six more engineered failures that will cost you thousands. The switch from metal to plastic timing chain guides is the most expensive time bomb in your engine. Every German manufacturer now uses plastic guides that disintegrate between 100,000 to 150,000 kilometers, causing catastrophic engine failure. They know plastic can't handle the heat and stress, they use it anyways because it saves 15 euros and guarantees future failure. BMW's N20 and N47 engines are notorious. The plastic guides become brittle from heat cycling, crack and release the timing chain. When the chain jumps, valves hit pistons, destroying the engine. Repair costs? 4,000 euros if you're lucky. New engine if you're not. BMW's response to lawsuits? Components performed within design parameters. Those parameters just happen to end at warranty expiration. Audi's entire E8 888 engine family uses plastic guides and tensioners. Forums are filled with failures at 80,000 to 120,000 kilometers. The sound starts as a rattle on cold starts. That's your warning. Ignore it for even a thousand kilometers more and you're looking at full engine replacement. Audi dealers charge 3,500 euros for guide replacement, a job that requires engine removal. Mercedes went even further with the M271 and M272 engines. Not only are the guides plastic, but the balance shaft gears are too. They wear prematurely, throwing off engine timing and causing rough running before complete failure. Mercedes issued a goodwill campaign, not a recall, covering repairs only if complained loud enough and had full dealer history. Here's the disgusting part. Metal guides exist. Japanese manufacturers use them. They last the engine's lifetime. Independent suppliers make metal replacement guides for these engines that cost maybe 50 euros more than plastic. But manufacturers stick with plastic because endless repairs are more profitable than one-time sales. Your car's features are now expiring like milk. 
BMW charges 18 euros per month for heated seats that are already installed. Mercedes wants 500 euros a year for increased acceleration that's just a software lock. But the real scam is when lifetime features mysteriously stop working after warranty, forcing expensive software updates. BMW's connected drive services include basic functions like real-time traffic for navigation. After three years, it expires. The hardware is there, receiving data, but BMW disables it unless you pay them 69 euros per year. The navigation system you paid 2,000 euros for becomes partially useless because BMW decided recurring revenue matters more than customer satisfaction. Volkswagen's WeConnect is worse. Features like remote climate control, parking position, and even some safety notifications require subscriptions after the trial period. The car is physically capable, the hardware exists, but software locks you out. One day your app works, the next day it demands 99 euros per year to unlock features you thought you owned. Mercedes M-Buck system takes it even further. After warranty, certain features require software refreshes costing 300 to 500 euros at dealers. Coincidentally, these refreshes become necessary when other warranty work is needed. The infotainment slows down, voice commands stop working properly, and the dealer's solution is always an expensive update that temporarily fixes issues before they return. Tesla started this disaster, but German manufacturers perfected it. They're not just selling you a car anymore, they're selling you a platform for endless subscription extraction. Features that should last the vehicle's life are artificially limited to force ongoing payments. It's turning car ownership into car rental. European manufacturers quietly stopped fully galvanizing their cars, and the results are destroying vehicles from the inside out. They still galvanize visible panels for warranty periods, but structural components, subframes, and suspension mounting points now use cheaper coatings that fail after five to seven years. Mercedes W204 C-Class subframes are rotting across Europe. These structural components that hold the engine and front suspension are failing safety inspections at eight to 10 years old. Replacement cost? 2,500 euros plus labor. Mercedes solution? They offer partial coverage if you complain, but only within 10 years. After that, you're told it's normal wear. BMW E93 series subframes are equally affected. The rear subframe mountings tear from the body due to corrosion weakening the metal. It's a safety critical failure that BMW knew about but only addressed with reinforced plates on later models. Earlier owners? Told it's their responsibility despite being a design flaw. Volkswagen Group's cost cutting is visible underneath any five year old Audi, VW, or Skoda. Brake lines are rusting through, suspension components are corroding, and exhaust systems are disintegrating. They switch from hot dip galvanizing to cheaper e coating that looks identical when new but fails rapidly once the surface is compromised. The kicker? Japanese and Korean manufacturers still fully galvanize. A 10-year-old Mazda has less rust than a 5-year-old Audi. Hyundai offers a 12-year anti-perforation warranty. Germany? They offer 3 to 6 years and claim anything beyond is environmental factors. They literally designed rust back into cars to ensure replacement. The switch from mechanical to electric water pumps is a masterclass in engineered failure. Mechanical pumps lasted the engine's lifetime, 300,000 kilometers or more. Electric pumps fail at 60,000 to 100,000 kilometers, cost 600 to 1,200 euros to replace, and when they fail, they destroy your engine. Manufacturers knew this, they did it anyway. BMW pioneered this disaster with the N52 engine. The electric pump's plastic impeller disintegrates, sending debris through the cooling system. The motor bearings fail from heat cycling. The control module burns out. When it stops, your engine overheats in minutes. BMW's response? Electric pumps provide improved efficiency. The 1% fuel saving isn't worth the guaranteed failure. Volkswagen's EA AAA engines took it further. Their pumps fail so regularly that aftermarket companies make upgraded versions. The OEM pump has plastic components in the hot zone that warp and leak. Replacement requires timing chain removal on some models, turning a 200 euro part into a 1,500 euro job. VW dealers stock these pumps like service items because they fail so often. Mini's BMW sourced engines have pumps that fail catastrophically. The pump's thermostat housing is integrated plastic that cracks from heat cycling. When it fails, it dumps coolant instantly. Drivers report engines overheating with no warning, causing head gasket failure or worse. Mini's fix? Updated part that fails slightly less often. The conspiracy deepens. These pumps have temperature sensors that could predict failure. The car's computer sees pump speed dropping, current draw increasing, flow rates decreasing. It could warn you weeks before failure. 
but manufacturers don't program warnings because surprise failures generate more dealer revenue than preventative replacements. Lifetime transmission fluid is the biggest lie in automotive history. Manufacturers seal transmissions, claim the fluid never needs changing, then watch them fail at 120 to 150,000 kilometers. The fuel does need changing, they just don't want you to do it because dead transmissions sell new cars. ZF's 8HP transmission, used by BMW, Audi and others, is sealed for life according to manufacturers. ZF themselves recommend fluid changes at 80,000 to 100,000 kilometers. The BMW removed the dipstick, sealed the fill port, and tells customers it's maintenance free. Result? Failures at 120,000 kilometers costing between 5,000 and 7,000 euros. The fluid that was lifetime turns into black sludge that destroys everything. Mercedes's 7G Tronic is worse. Not only is it sealed, but it has a conductor plate that fails from heat and contamination. The lifetime fluid breaks down, creates deposits, and destroys the 800 euro electrical component. Mercedes solution? Replace the entire valve body for 2,500 euros instead of just changing fluid that would have prevented it. Volkswagen's DSG is a good example of criminal negligence. Early versions were sealed for life. After massive failures and lawsuits, VW quietly started recommending fluid changes at 40,000 km intervals, but they never recalled or notified existing owners. Thousands of DSG transmissions failed because VW prioritized the maintenance-free marketing over mechanical reality. The proof that it is deliberate? Every independent transmission specialist changes the lifetime fluid and extends transmission life by 200,000 km or more. The fluid costs 100 euros. The transmission costs 5,000 euros. Manufacturers chose customer expense over honest maintenance. They turned a service item into a replacement component. The removal of dipsticks isn't about modernization. It's about forced dependency and hidden failures. When you can't check your oil, you don't know it's low until the engine is damaged. When you can't check transmission fluid, you don't know it needs changing. Ignorance generates repair revenue. BMW's electronic oil level sensor strategy is documented in their technical training. The sensor only warns when oil is critically low, not when it's dirty, contaminated, or breaking down. You can't see metal particulates that indicate wear. You can't smell fuel dilution from short trips. You're blind to your engine's health, exactly as intended. The real reason emerges in dealer training materials. Without dipsticks, customers must visit dealers for basic checks. Dealers then discover other needed services. It's called service capture, and removing dipsticks increased dealer visits by 30% according to BMW's own metrics. Every visit is an opportunity to sell unnecessary services or discover problems. Mercedes went further. Their oil level sensors deliberately fail at 100,000 to 150,000 kilometers, forcing dealer visits. The sensor costs 50 euros, but replacement requires dropping the oil pan on some models, turning it into a 500 euro job. The sensor could be external for easy replacement. They designed it internally for maximum labor charges. The transmission dipstick deletion is even more sinister. Customers who can't check fluid don't know it needs changing. Manufacturers claim it's lifetime knowing it will fail after warranty. When it does fail, customers blame themselves for not maintaining it. Not knowing maintenance was impossible by design. It's victim blaming engineering. These seven engineered failures represent billions in stolen wealth from European consumers. Manufacturers haven't just reduced quality. They've weaponized planned obsolescence to guarantee your car becomes worthless precisely when they need you to buy another one. The plastic timing chain guides that could be metal for 15 euros more. The electric water pumps that fail where mechanical ones lasted forever. The lifetime fluids that aren't. The software that expires. The rust protection that doesn't protect. Every failure is calculated, documented, and profitable. Internal documents prove this isn't a conspiracy theory. It's conspiracy fact. BMW's optimized durability, Mercedes market appropriate lifespan, Volkswagen's economic repair threshold. These are euphemisms for programmed failure, and they're stealing thousands from every owner. The total cost? Industry analysts estimate European consumers spend 45 billion euros annually on preventable failures, repairs that wouldn't exist if manufacturers use components they know last longer. That's 45 billion euros transferred from working families to corporate profits through engineered failure. But knowledge is power. Now you know the 100,000 km death clock is real, you know why that plastic part failed. You know the lifetime fluid is a lie. Armed with this information, you can fight back.
Change the lifetime fluid. Replace plastic with metal aftermarket parts. Maintain what they claim doesn't need maintaining. More importantly, vote with your wallet. Japanese manufacturers still use metal timing chain guides. Korean brands offer seven-year warranties because their cars actually last. Every purchase of a deliberately fragile German car validates this exploitation. Every purchase of a reliable alternative punishes it. The European auto industry once meant engineering excellence that lasted generations. Now it means engineering failure that lasts just past warranty. They've perverted their heritage for quarterly earnings, betrayed customer trust for subscription revenue, and destroyed reliability for replacement sales. Which engineering failure has cost you the most? What lifetime component failed right after warranty? Share your experiences below. Every story validates what we've exposed. And if this video saved you from buying a time bomb, subscribe now for more automotive truth. Next week, I'm exposing the nine reliable European cars that are actually ticking time bombs. Number three has an engine problem so common that independent mechanics refuse to work on them. The manufacturer knows, dealers know, but buyers don't until it's too late. Don't buy anything until you see it.